All right, Pam, thank you. And we will get an early look at the Saints offense and not that defense and not Colin Kaepernick, but Drew Brees and his brilliance that he's brought here to New Orleans since he joined as a free agent from San Diego in 2006. 49ers in the top spot in the NFC West. The Saints have climbed back into contention for a playoff spot in the NFC. We're glad you're with us today on Fox. This is Cadet. And Travaris is out across the 20 to the 25. And now Drew Brees in his seven year career here with the Saints. The team is number two across the NFL in points per game. And Drew Brees is number one since 2006 in total yards per game, pass yardage per game, touchdown passes. He doesn't have his play caller, Sean Payton, on the sideline as head coach, but he is still as dangerous as anybody in the league. Yeah, and he's kind of found his groove too, Joe. You know, you think back to the start of this year, and a lot of the emphasis or when people talk of their problems was the surrounding the running game. He wasn't himself either. Under pressure, got away from Sopoaga and then finds his tight end, David Thomas. Sopoaga was there, could not bring down Drew Brees, and it's just a two yard completion instead of Isaac's first sack of the year. Well, Isaac Sopoaga, they just turn him loose, and he's able to just take a straight line to Drew Brees, fortunate just to be able to get the ball out and pick up any type of, of gain was a real positive based on the way that play began. This is the number one defense in the NFL as far as points per game allowed. The running game has been much better for the Saints, but this time it's Alden Smith making the play on Mark Ingram, no gain. And so a third and eight coming up as we look at the offensive line and the rookie Bryce Harris making his first NFL start in place of the injured Zach Streif and his backup Charles Brown. Backs and receivers. Jimmy Graham is the big target tight end and a subtle shake of the head. From Joe Vitt who was three and one since returning from his six game suspension. Braves in trouble. And nowhere to go in the direction of Thomas and it's three and out and this good 49ers defense starts hot here in New Orleans. Well they immediately get pressure on Drew Brees. We saw the first down play and then on second down Alden Smith who had a, <laughs> had a great game on Monday night against the Chicago Bears with five and a half sacks. He makes a big stop on Mark Ingram and then they turn Ray McDonald loose on that third down play. Horstead's had a big year. He hits it. It's a good one. Again, from back inside the 20 to the 30. That's it. And then got popped. Drilled by Jonathan Casillas. It's a 12 yard return, and here comes number seven, the hand picked quarterback of head coach Jim Harbaugh, Colin Kaepernick. One noise. He's going to have to deal with a lot of it. It's Gore. Nothing. Give him a yard as Vilma made the stop. And we'll set this offense and look up front. You absolutely love this offensive line. Well, the offensive lines that I've been watching since I got into broadcasting 12 years ago, Joe, it's the it's the best that it's the best I've seen. Now I played behind some great offensive lines. This group reminds me the most of that group. Just as big and as physical, and every bit as dominant. Handoff is to Hunter, running left, cuts up field, and then gets hit by Cedric Ellis. A gain of five. And we'll take a look at this defense and the numbers aren't good in any way shape or form but this last ranked defense 
is getting better the last few weeks. Well, they're getting better. I mean, they're still giving up a lot of yards, but they've been good when teams have gotten into scoring position. Interestingly enough, last week against the Bears, the 49ers open up with play action passes. They come out on the road, as we talked about, a hostile environment, run the ball on first and second down. Third down and four. First throw of the day as Kaepernick slings it about a half yard shy of a first down to Manningham. He shows off his great velocity. He's got a big arm, but he was short as was Manningham of the first down. I think that's on Mario Manningham. The way he pushed that up, you'd think if all you need was four yards, that you could push that beyond the chains and to complete a pass and only pick up three yards and come up short on that, really inexcusable. One of the big weapons still in the game. Darren Sproles back. After missing three games with a broken left hand, it's fourth down, and Andy Lee will punt. He's had a good year. Fair catch, right around the 10. So each side, three and out. Drew Brees and the offense for the Saints back to the field as Kaepernick will come over and talk to Alex Smith. No score. As the Saints have gotten better, their run game has improved. And over the last three, they're averaging over 140 yards on the ground per game. They've got a deep talent pool back there with Thomas. Now Sproles is back. Ingram and Chris Ivory. And it's Ivory in a tailback for the second possession. He gets it. And gets a yard and a half. And now the defense for San Francisco at 3-4, and nobody's coordinating a better defense anywhere than Vic Fangio. And they are tough across the board, and they take the ball away, leading the NFL with 53 over the last year and a half. Well, they're an old-school defense. I mean, they do the things that, that great defensive teams do. They fly around. They play aggressive. They're good tacklers. They don't give up big plays. I mean, every yard you get against this group is earned. On second down at nine, it scrolls out on the edge. And stumbling since the moment he caught it, picks up five. Chris Culliver on the stop, third down coming up. Well, you see Darren Sproles, we talked about, he's missed the last three games, and he didn't wear anything protective on his hand during the week leading up to this game. And they wanted to try it out and see how it was in pregame warm-ups and go with the protective padding. And apparently he felt comfortable enough with it in warm-ups that he's going with it here in the game. On third down, Breeze finds scrolls. And he cannot get around Dante Whitner. A gain of just two, and it's back-to-back -back three and outs forced by this 49er defense. That's an excellent job by Dante Widner. He had Darren Sproles in man coverage, and there was a lot of space. I mean, you give, you give Sproles the kind of room that he initially had when he came out into the route. There's not many guys in this league that can make that play. That's just an excellent job in the open field, and it's what I talked about. This group is made up of a bunch of good tacklers. Morstead hits a booming punt that sails out of bounds. And we'll see where they mark it. Good field position at the 38 for the 49ers when we come back. Second possession for Kaepernick. No score in New Orleans. Interesting that Alex Smith has his helmet on on the sideline as the 49ers have it for the second time in the game. Well, he wants to play. <laughs> and he may. There's nothing that says he won't get into this game, even if Kaepernick stays healthy. Jim Harbaugh has kept everything close to the vest all week. It's Frank Gore on first down to the 40. Picked up two. Why don't we meet Colin Kaepernick? He was born in Milwaukee, raised in Turlock, California, grew up both a 49er and a Packer fan. He went to the University of Nevada, the only school that offered him a scholarship. He was a great baseball player, by the way, and was drafted in the second round as Jim Harbaugh and company moved up to get him. Big arm. 
presents possibly more the vertical threat at quarterback for the 49ers than Alex Smith. Timeout. Confusion with the fullback Bruce Miller and Frank Gore, who was lined up wide to the left of the offensive formation. Second down when we come back. Confusion offensively for San Francisco with the play clock winding down. Kaepernick had to use a timeout. Second down and eight. Now Gore goes to the other side. Kaepernick hands a man Manningham. And Mario Manningham has the game's first first down. And fought his way all the way down to the 20. 40 yards for Mario Manningham. Well, Jabari Greer is locked in the slot. You see the route there? That's excellent quickness and burst coming out of that route by Mario Manningham to create the separation for Colin Kaepernick. That's just an excellent job. You know, Manningham probably you know, hasn't had quite as much activity as he was anticipating when he signed with San Francisco, but he is a talented guy and shows it on that last route. That was his longest play of the year. On first down, Kaepernick hands his man, and there he is again, Manningham. And you see how fast the ball gets out of the hand of Kaepernick and right on the receiver. That one good for 13. Uh, you, you see the arm strength that Colin Kaepernick has. I mean, he really does throw the ball well. He had good timing with Manningham on the outside. And you know, last week, I thought offensive coordinator Greg Roman did a nice job of, of allowing Kaepernick to get the ball out of his hands, especially early in that game, and settle in. And he's doing it again here on this drive. First down and goal, Kaepernick keeps it. He faked it to Hunter and he walks in for the touchdown. Barely touched, if at all, and Colin Kaepernick has his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. And that happened in a blink. Well, this is that read option that, that really concerns Steve Spagnuolo coming into the game. He's reading the defensive end here, Will Smith. So he rides Kendall Hunter. And as soon as Will Smith takes him, then he's going to pull it. And you see the blocking on the outside. Randy Moss doing an excellent job on the outside and, and helping free Kaepernick for the touchdown. Yeah, Steve Spagnuolo, as it's 7-0, said what really bothers him or concerns him is that Kaepernick looks like he's really reading it. And he pulled that ball back, took it in, barely touched. Heck, not at all. Touchdown Kaepernick and the 49ers up by seven. Just a four play drive, 62 yards, and the big play was the 40 yarder to Mario Manningham. Well, that's an outstanding drive, and you know, a little different approach overall for offensive coordinator Greg Roman as far as what he did early in this game. The, the Saints are challenging the 49ers to throw it on early down so far. They've not gone play action with a shot over the top. I expect that the next time the 49ers get the ball, but that's an excellent drive by Colin Kaepernick in that offense. Shot of Greg Roman, who is being considered, and rightfully so, for a number of head coaching jobs, Joe. And I think this offense will have a little different look if he's not the one calling the plays. He has been exceptional the last two seasons with the way that he has orchestrated this team. Akers will kick it away. Kaepernick last week, six completions of 20 or more yards. He's got one for 40 already in this game to set up the touchdown, which he carried in himself. This is Cadet. And Traveris out to the 21. How about some images from one of the best playoff games we've seen in a long time last January? This 
is a rematch of that game, a game won by San Francisco 36-32. Four lead changes over the final four minutes. And a big day by Vernon Davis as Ingram carries it forward for four. Vernon Davis, 180 receiving yards, two touchdowns, the most receiving yards by a tight end in postseason history. Drew Brees threw for the 462 passing yardage most ever in a playoff loss. And then the 49ers were involved with the Giants a week later. Losing in overtime, the Giants went on to win it all. Second down and six with Graham in motion. Brees hasn't gone that way yet, but he's got his first first down. Marcus Colston. When you think back to that playoff game last last year, Joe, and, and that has really stuck with a number of these New Orleans Saints players because of the opportunity that was lost. I mean, you think about that game. The Saints were, were favorites going in. Had they have been able to win that game, then they would have played the NFC Championship game here in New Orleans against the New York Giants, who they had beaten handedly. Just a few weeks earlier. First down at the 37. Play action from Breeze. Good protection. Pass is caught. Diving catch by Morgan. Well, Joseph Morgan, he is the real speed guy for this New Orleans Saints offense. He can get down the field. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities. But he makes a heck of a catch. You see him reaching out and hauling that one in. But give that offensive line credit as well. They gave Drew Brees excellent protection and allowed Morgan to get down the field for the big game. 33 yards, and that sets up Brees at the 30. Brees finds the fullback. Good for six. Let's go to Patrick O'Neill for a game break. All right, Joe, thanks. It's the Rams and the Cardinals and the first touchdown of the year for Beanie Wells. He's been out since September 23rd with turf toe. The Rams 0-4-1 in their last five. The Cards have lost six in a row. Joe, Troy, and Pam, hopefully somebody can win this one. Back to you. Lindley getting the start for Arizona, the four and six Cardinals. Who started 4-0, second and three. To Ingram, and he's got a first down inside the red zone to the 18. Well, I think one of the real keys for New Orleans in this ball game is is going to be really what has allowed them to win here in recent weeks, and they've got to maintain some balance. Now, with Darren Sproles coming back after having missed the last three games, how are they going to use these running backs? And that's a decision that Joe Vitt has got to. He has got to make. They started this game with Mark Ingram. On the second possession, they came with Chris Ivory. They're going back to Mark Ingram. But they've got a whole slew of backs to feed there in that backfield. Back to Ingram, who is to the 15. Lamont Brooks on the stop at game of two. You know, and Chris Ivory, who really had no playing time, he was inactive for a good part of the first seven weeks. And when he was active, he wasn't getting any carries. And he's gotten on the field because of the injury to Sproles. And they've been able to use him, and he's been productive. Well, this is a big one. Bryce Harris is making his first NFL start. They have only one backup tackle left, and we're going to see him, William Robinson, as Harris is down and needs help. Harris got his ankle rolled on, and so he gets carted off. There he is, number 79, with that right ankle, gets pinned under the body of Ahmad Brooks. And so William Robinson, who was signed as a street free agent, last year was on the practice squad for the first 10 weeks, was active for five games and cut. Prior to week 17, they signed him because they needed backup and they need him here. Pass is caught. That's Moore. And Lance Moore is knocked down just shy of first down yardage. It'll be third and one. Goldson on the tackle. And Breeze is going to have to get rid of that ball quickly with the kind of offensive line he's got in front of him. Well, William Robinson, for his first snap, he actually does a pretty good job. You know, they 
He works down to his left and then he picks up a rusher on the outside and a little bit better than when Bryce Harris came in a week ago anyway. So third down and one. It's Ingram. Depends on the spot. Looks like he got enough and he did. So now this red zone offense has a first down. A first and goal inside the 10 and it is the top red zone offense in the NFL but they do it mainly through the air with 18 touchdown passes compared to only three rushing touchdowns. First and goal from the six. Confusion by the 49ers defense, their second, second timeout. Charge timeout in San Francisco. So we'll take a break. First and goal for the New Orleans Saints. We come back as they trail at home by seven. Zach Streif had a procedure done in his low abdomen. It's considered, I guess, a groin issue. He thinks he'll be back on Thursday when the Saints play in Atlanta. You know, Joe, you talked about this red zone for the New Orleans Saints and how good they've been. You know, usually you used to think that teams that were good in the red zone were teams that could run the ball, and the Saints are, are number one, and really, for the most part, it's because of this guy right here, Drew Brees. I mean, you make a guy miss, you throw a ball where only your receiver can make a play, and he's got the type of receivers to make those plays. Pierre Thomas in the game, and he gets it and gets nothing. Navarro Bowman, the first one there. The all-pro linebacker made the stop. Let's go down to the field and Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, the latest on Bryce Harris. Harris has been taken back to get his lower leg x-ray. His return is doubtful. Back to you. So they're down to the guy they just signed, William Robinson. And that's it. Zach Streif is the starting right tackle. His backup, Charles Brown, went down late in the first Brady. half last week. Brady. At Oakland. Brady. Say he did not get in, although he didn't wasn't touched. Touchdown. At first they said no touchdown, but by the time he got across the plane of the goal line, clearly a score, and the officials got together and then signaled touchdown. The extra point to tie it. Well, we'll take a look at it. You, you know, obviously with it being a scoring play, they'll look. And I, I don't know. I'm not so sure he did. You're gonna see him go across in motion, and you, then you got to sell it right here and make it look like you're in run blocking mode. He does. They turn him loose, and he's able to get into the flat open. But Joe, it sure looked to me like the knee might have been down before the ball crossed the goal line. Yeah, but nobody touched him. Well, there you have it. <laughs> so it's touchdown. So it's a touchdown, <laughs> and it's now. 54 straight games for Drew Brees with a touchdown pass or more. And while the Saints are about to kick it back to the 49ers, I think it's interesting now as we get into week 12 and now we're halfway through this Sunday, the NFC playoff picture is getting more and more interesting more and more muddled which makes teams like New Orleans and some of the others Dallas Washington all have hope here as we get uh, down the stretch yeah, I think with what happened especially in some of these early games with Seattle going down and then Tampa Bay going down I mean it's going to be a real tight race as we you know move through the rest of this season I think you know when you talk about the Saints for instance you know finally being able to get back to 500 football at five and five you know will they have enough gas to get them through the rest of the season you know Joe back in 07 this was a team that began the season 0 and 4 also they got to 4 and 4 and then finished that year 7 and 9 it's hard to do but certainly this is a team much more accomplished now than they were back in that second year under Sean Payton this is the first of three straight games again against division leaders We've got the 49ers today. They take on Atlanta next on Thursday. And then they've got the Giants at the Giants. 
Seven seven game with a minute forty five left in the opening quarter. And Kyle Williams gets a head start. And takes it out to the twenty five. This year in more than 70,000 schools at 1,700 events and through the creation of youth fitness zones across the country, NFL Play 60 has improved the health of millions of American children through the power of play. Visit NFLRush.com to learn how NFL Play 60 could come to your community. So more for Colin Kaepernick. Jim Harbaugh is wedded to no quarterback. And he traded up to get Kaepernick, the guy that he thinks is the bigger big play quarterback. Makes his second consecutive start. Despite the guy that took him to 13 and 3 last year, Alex Smith. He left two weeks ago with a concussion and was putting together his best statistical season. Being healthy and ready to go. Kaepernick buys a little time and he gets knocked out of bounds by Jordan after a gain of three. Well, I think the entire decision is is pretty interesting but it's one that I don't necessarily disagree with Joe. I mean I think the easier the safe decision for Jim Harbaugh and that staff would have been certainly to go with Alex Smith but you know, I think that Colin Kaepernick showed on Monday night what he brings to this offense and that's big play ability. Now if I was in Alex Smith's shoes I don't know that I would have been as accommodating in the whole process this week as he was but that's the type of guy that Alex Smith is. Kaepernick stands tall and finds Vernon Davis and Vernon Davis who had a big week against Chicago is good for 14. Penalty flag is down on the play back near the line of scrimmage and it's coming back holding number 59. That's Jonathan Goodwin the center. You see him right in the middle of the screen. The hold right there. So a pretty nice completion there that's called back and you know, to go back to Alex Smith I, you know the the thing that's kind of held him back to a certain extent is that he has always wanted to do the right thing on the field. He doesn't want to make a mistake. He's not wanting to throw a ball into a tight spot force a ball down the field but I think it's that that whole approach is why this may work in San Francisco because he's going to handle it and do it the right way. Kaepernick in trouble. Finds his fullback Miller and Bruce Miller's got a first down spinning out to the 45 yard line. And the legs of Colin Kaepernick bought enough time for a 26 yard completion. Yeah, he's able to avoid the sack there by Cameron Jordan who's coming off the edge and then get the ball to Bruce Miller. And here they were in second and long and yet they're able to convert that and pick up the first down. It's going to do it for the first quarter here in New Orleans. 7 7 game Fox NFL Sunday and America's Game of the Week returns after this from your local Fox station. Start the second quarter and here's how the first quarter came to a close with this ball being knocked out of the arms of Bruce Miller. Eventually Colin Kaepernick comes down picks it up but because there was no immediate action by another player after the ball popped out the ruling down by contact stands according to Mike Pereira so first down at the forty five. Kaepernick. Rolling to his right looking to run and he got hit hard. The ball popped out. But it stays with San Francisco. Cameron Jordan knocked it out. And he laid a big hit. On Kaepernick a gain of one. Well he sure did and I don't think Kaepernick knew that Cameron Jordan was there at all and it looked to me Joe like it was a designed run right from the start. I mean immediately he had blockers that were engaged. Right here you can see Delaney Walker and then even Randy Moss down the field. You know, he was not really looking to run a route and get open and Kaepernick he took a took a pretty good shot. Second down and nine. This is Gore bobbling it incomplete. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. All right the St. Louis Rams get their first turnover 
in six weeks. Janoris Jenkins, the rookie, steps in, picks off the rookie quarterback, Ryan Lindley, 36 yards on the pick six, and that one is tied at seven off the desert. Go to Ryan Pan. All right, Kurt, that was the first incompletion moments ago from Kaepernick, so now third down and nine. clock expires and that'll make it third down and 14 well, you can see what that crowd noise does to the execution for an offense trying to communicate trying to change a play protection at the line of scrimmage it's it's Hard to do, sometimes impossible to do. I played here in this Superdome, and it's a different experience than most any other stadium in football. And that's one of the risks of starting a young guy like Kaepernick, not used to it. His other start at home, despite some of that Wildcat stuff he's done this year. They just get this one away. Low snap. Kaepernick out to his left. Pass incomplete. Looking for Crabtree. And it's fourth down. Good coverage down the field. I mean, you have to sustain coverage for an extended period of time when you've got a quarterback who's rolling out. And the 49ers have shown that. They picked up some nice plays last week, rolling Kaepernick to his left. He throws the ball well, whether he's moving to his right, which is more natural for a right-handed quarterback, or to his left. But an excellent job by the New Orleans Saints getting off the field on third down. So much more to talk about with regard to Alex Smith. And Colin Kaepernick as Sproles will let it go over his head and into the end zone. So the Saints will start at the 20. Drew Brees and company in a 7-7 game in Louisiana. Colin Kaepernick who gets the start. Second straight week dealing with that crowd noise that cost him five yards with a delay of game. And now Breeze, who has extended his NFL record 54 straight with a touchdown pass, has completed seven straight in this game. He hands to Ingram, who made the most of it. Got two. Ball comes out. We'll see if they're going to say his forward progress was stopped. It was, and it's second down. So once the forward progress was stopped, a gain of two, even though the ball popped out later, it stays with the Saints. And Jim Harbaugh had this reaction. By the way, two Thursdays ago, Jim Harbaugh had a procedure on his heart for an irregular heartbeat. It's been a busy couple of weeks. Colston survives a hit, makes a catch. Whitner is in there a gain of five. How about that hit by Dante Widner? Remember, he's the one who knocked out Pierre Thomas in that divisional playoff game last year, and he comes up and ooh, could have been the same result for Marcus Colson. That's a big-time collision. So now third down and three. Jermon Bushrod moved, pointing at the defensive line. Here's John Perry. Neutral zone infraction. Five yard penalty. So a first down by penalty because of this. Well, that was the right call, too. Alden Smith, he comes into the neutral zone, and he's the reason that Jermon Bushrod came out of his stance. And, boy, Alden Smith, I guess with William Robinson coming in, as we talked about, for Bryce Harris at right tackle, the best thing he can say right now is that Alden Smith's working the opposite side of that <laughs> offensive line. Smith may find his way over to the right. other side at some point, but they've got a good combination going with Alden Smith and 
Justin Smith. Ready, it. Who moves down inside as the handoff is to Ivory. And Ivory is good for three. Give you a season review for the Saints. They started the season 0 and 4. Jonathan Vilma came back to the team week seven. Joe Vitt rejoined this team in week eight. And a five and one record. They've won five of six since that 0 and 4 start. Trying to become the second playoff team since 1990. 92 Chargers, the only team to start a season 0 and 4 and make the postseason. Well, if they make the postseason, Joe, they will have certainly earned it. One to dig out of that hole, but the schedule that they have coming up will not be easy. Pass is broken up. Goldson made the play on Ingram. No flag. And now third down. Joe Vitt's been in the NFL since 1979. A real good organizational man, and he really was Sean Payton's right-hand man. He's bounced around the league, and when you talk to him, he's one of the most impressive. He may be the acting head coach or whatever, but he's one of the most impressive guys we've talked to in a while with exactly what's going on with his team. There's no question they miss Sean Payton, but Joe Vitt has given this group some leadership since he came back. Pass is caught. First down, New Orleans. And Thomas has been busy. Now it's Jimmy Graham getting into the fun. His first of the day. And Jimmy Graham, he's in the slot. You see the contact there by Patrick Willis. He's the one this year for the 49ers who has drawn the assignment of having to cover a lot of these receiving tight ends around the league. It's a pretty good matchup right there. Not many can hold up very well against Jimmy Graham. He's such an athletic guy, obviously a basketball background, and a guy who's come along. As a third round draft pick just a few years ago. I remember Sean Payton talking about him his rookie season and said this guy is going to end up being the steal of the 2010 draft and he was right. Here's Ivory. Nice run. Chris Ivory gets seven and a guy that averaged over six yards a carry through the month of November. Fourth highest total in the NFL. Well, Chris Ivory a guy who you know led this team in rushing back in 2010. In fact, you know, you look at this team, Joe, over the years, you know, under Sean Payton, when they've been pretty good, I mean, they've run the ball well. That has started to happen here over the last three ball games, but each of the last three years, someone different has led the team in rushing. Last year, of course, Darren Sproles, and if Mark Ingram continues to do the things he's done in recent weeks, he may lead the team this year. Take the handoff to Thomas. Reeves has all day, and underneath with a flag down, finds Thomas. Penalty flag is down in the secondary. It appears to be a hold against San Francisco. Prior to the pass being thrown, illegal contact, defense number 25. That penalty is declined. Results in play, first down. We get Terrell Brown. He lands more there, number 16. And Terrell Brown, there's the contact in the hold. Official standing right there and gets the call. How about with a makeshift offensive line, at least on the right side? Breeze has hardly been under any pressure against this very good 49ers defense. Here's Ivory. Back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. College football's biggest championship games return to Fox. Friday, it's the Pac-12 championship live in prime time as the 17th-ranked Bruins of UCLA take on 8th-ranked Stanford. Saturday, the Big Ten championship, 14th-ranked Nebraska takes on Wisconsin. Pac-12, Big Ten championships only on Fox. Stanford beat UCLA yesterday, 35-17. Second down and 10. Ready. We're ready. What's up? Breeze steps up. Incomplete for Lance Moore. Talk about the protection that Drew Breeze is getting in this game. I mean, this is the guy you have to handle. As a group, this defense has 23 sacks. 15 of them are by Alden Smith. So Ahmad Brooks and some of these others, they're certainly capable of putting pressure on an opposing offense, but number 99. If you're going to be able to protect the quarterback, you better have some answers for him. And so far, the Saints have had those. 
It's been a record setting start to the career. The first rounder from Missouri. With Joe Vitt likened to the great Derek Thomas. Third down and ten blitz. Bowman came through untouched. And this pass is incomplete. It was Breeze out of the pocket. He barely got it back to the line of scrimmage, and we'll see if they throw a flag. It could come late. There was no receiver in that area. No flag yet. Now they throw the flag. And it'll be grounding and bring up fourth down. Attention of grounding. Number nine, offense. The quarterback was in the pocket, but where the ball landed, there was no eligible receiver. This penalty includes a loss of down. Fourth down. Well, Navarro Bowman, he hits it on the run. There's nobody that picks him up, either the center, De La Puente, he's got to be there, or Jari Evans, the right guard, has got to squeeze that, but just a straight shot. And, you know, that was the right call. It was Breeze is sitting there and just trying to avoid the sack, and not, not a whole lot he could do on that play. That was a loss of over 20 yards on that grounding. It takes the ball back to the 40. Morstead will punt. Ken waiting. Good coverage downfield. That ball's muffed. And recovered by the Saints. Raphael Bush and Courtney Roby was downfield and forced that as Ted Ginn Jr. muffs the punt. I was a little surprised when he tried to make a play on that ball from the start, seeing the relationship there was between him and the gunner. Uh, you just a mistake there on special teams and of course you think back to that NFC championship game with Kyle Williams last year against the New York Giants but for the most part special teams for the 49ers a pretty established group. Raphael Bush comes away with the football but Courtney Roby was the first guy downfield and was right in the lap of Ted Ginn Jr. First down the 11. Good protection. Sproles. And he has Alden Smith a flip over his back. But Alden hung on for the tackle. Hung on anyway. Sproles can be a bit slippery. I think most defenders would tell you that. Alden Smith going over the top, but he hung on until some of his teammates could get there to help. 6 4 Alden Smith over the back of 5 6 Darren Sproles, second and nine. and make sure Marcus Colston's feet are in bounds, which I believe that they were. This is left in and then it's right, but this is a perfectly thrown ball by Drew Brees. You're going to see the defender right here in the middle and where Drew Brees has to throw that ball to keep it away from Deshaun Goldson, and he does, and Marcus Colson, as he does so many times, makes the adjustment for the reception. That combination now, Brees to Colston. 56 touchdown passes to number 12. That is the top active duo in the NFL from the muff punt. The turnover. Bush with the recovery. Holst in the touchdown. 14 unanswered by the Saints, up by seven. Since Colston and Drew Brees came together in New Orleans in 2006, Brees is a free agent from San Diego. Colston as a Seventh round pick out of Hostra. The two have combined for 56 touchdown passes, the most in the NFL. And Drew Brees now with his 96th career multiple touchdown game. It's 14 7. He might be the most unassuming great wide receiver in the game today. 49ers will start at the 20 down by seven. 
Drew Brees with a celebration. Ginn can only watch after turning it over. His team down seven. With Alex Smith on the sideline, former first overall pick in 2005, to the 49er offense on the field. Big drive, down by seven. Under eight to go, first half, and the handoff is to Gore. Cameron Jordan is there to bring him down a gain of four. Think about what Alex Smith Troy is going through. He's gone from that first overall pick to into the category of a bust to a smart, celebrated quarterback. Took the 49ers to their first NFC Championship game since 98 last year. 13 and 3 last year, 6 2 and 1, leading the league in completion percentage and number three in quarterback rating, and he is benched. Second and six. Four man rush. Kaepernick finds Vernon Davis, who has to go off his shoulder pads incomplete. And I, <laughs> I think that. You know, you lay it out there, Joe, and, and I think that's why Alex Smith, when we visited with him, said, I don't think I've done anything to lose my job, you know, and and I would agree with that. You know, I don't think he really did anything to, to lose his job either, and, you know, but yet I think for, for Jim Harbaugh, he just sees what Colin Kaepernick can do. I think the thing that has, that when they have looked at Alex Smith, it's been the inability to get the ball down the field. And that's what they like about Colin Kaepernick. Play clock down to one. They also like this. Kaepernick can run. And he slides down with a first down at the 40. Third down and six and a 15-yard carry by a guy who's averaging over seven yards a run. Well, you can see the middle of the offensive line there just open up because of the game up front. And then there's nobody there. They run linebackers out. But, you know, I think that it, we're, we're quick to say, hey, Colin Kaepernick, he can run and do those types of things. But Alex Smith can run, too. I mean, we, we've seen that. We've seen it in, in big games. I, I just think it's the what he does as a passer, I really believe, is what they like most about him when comparing the two guys. From the 39 play action, Kaepernick. Comes underneath to Delaney Walker. And Walker is stood up in midfield, but he's got a 49er first down. Let's go down to the field and Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, to follow up on what you guys were talking about, I spoke to Joe Staley about Alex Smith and why his teammates haven't exactly been all that vocal in support of Smith. The Niners left tackle said it twice. Alex knows how I feel. He chose his words very carefully, and Staley was clearly uncomfortable with the topic. Well, Vernon Davis, he came in after that Monday night game. He was he, he wasn't shy about how he felt about Colin Kaepernick, calling him the man. Neither was Kyle Williams. Under six to go. Opening half, good game. First down from midfield. Kaepernick under pressure, stays upright. Penalty flag flies as Crabtree makes the catch. And is knocked out of bounds at the 14. A flag is down back in the area where Kaepernick let it go. The Saints think it's against the 49ers. Looked like they maybe, maybe got Anthony Davis. It looked like it was in the vicinity of where he was. Right tackle, number 76. Ten-yard penalty. First down. And that's who they got. Yeah, you're going to see him on the outside, and it's really not until Kaepernick starts to scramble out to the right when they get him. And they could have gotten Alex Boone there at right guard, but right there is where they got the call, and the flag comes in. And as Kaepernick scrambles out to his right, Anthony Davis feels the defender starting to try to get away from him and grabs him just enough, which drew the flag, and he was holding Turk from pride. Eliminates a 36-yarder to Crabtree. First and 20. Hunter carries it. Nothing. Second and 20. Let's go to Kurt for a game break. Well, Beanie Wells is not played since week three due to a turf toe injury. He is back today for the first time for Arizona, and they need it. Having lost six straight games, Wells gives them the lead over St. Louis. 14-7 on that touchdown run, and they just picked off the Rams in the end zone to hold on. Joe Troy and Pam. All right, Kurt, thanks. 
There's the balance of the 49ers who face a second and 20. That's Randy Moss. Kaepernick had his arm hit as he let it go. And it's third down. It was Turk McBride who got his hands on the arm of Kaepernick. Third and 20. You know, not to belabor the point, Joe, but you know, we talked about it at the outset of the game as far as the 49ers inability to get big plays last year and even with the people that they brought in and some of the things that they've tried to do they really haven't changed I mean they still have not had the big plays in the passing game I think this is a I think this is a staff that realizes that has to get better for them to ultimately achieve what they want to do third down and 20. Kaepernick comes underneath to Gore. He's got a long way to go. And he won't get there. Did the most he could, but it's fourth down. 13 yards, so he's seven yards short. Patrick on the tackle. Yeah, so a good job by the Saints. You know, of course, the holding penalty, that eliminated a pretty nice gain there to Crabtree, but for the New Orleans Saints defensively to be able to get off the field and, and we talked about it I mean they give up a lot of yards but it's a group that here over the last month is is starting to gain a little bit of confidence as crazy as that may sound Andy Lee to call. end over end with Sproles calling for a fair catch at the 10. Seven point game, Saints with the ball and the lead here at home. New Orleans has touchdowns of two of their last three drives. Last one only had to go 11 yards after the muff punt by Ted Ginn Jr. They open this game with two three and outs. With three and a half to go opening quarter, and with three timeouts left, Drew Brees will crank up that. Fast-paced offense. Try and get it downfield as this drive starts at the 11. Oh, you like that ready? You ready? Good shot. Start with a run, and they start with it in the arms of Ingram, who is out to the 15. Well, of course, we know how much improved New Orleans has been running the football here in the last three weeks. Overall, you know they're not one of the better running teams, but they've been pretty good in the last three games and of course San Francisco their run defense is one of the best in football as well and so you wouldn't think the Saints would enjoy much success on the ground and maybe they won't so far they haven't but they certainly have to be able to maintain some type of balance that will open a lot of the things up then for their passing game Sproles at the top of the screen quick throw to Graham and Jimmy Graham is to the 20 to bring up third down and one Patrick Willis on the tackle. We got the good linebacking group of Smith, Willis, Bowman, Brooks. Good hard hitting safeties. Good up front defensively. On the corners, good enough. And it's third down and one. Ready! You ready? Watch up! And off is going to be Ingram. It depends on the spot. He looks to be a bit short. And that could carry us to the two-minute warning. San Francisco with only one timeout left. And Ingram is short. It's fourth down. Uh, that's a great job by that 49ers defense not even giving up a first down. You know that the Saints were hoping to at least be able to run out this clock if they weren't able to go down and come away with points. Instead, Kaepernick will have a chance to run a two-minute offense. Punt coming on the other side of the break. Two minutes left. During the break, the Saints have told the officiating crew that they are going to challenge the spot on that third down carry by Ingram. We've looked at it a number of different times from that shot and up above, and it just we don't see any look at it to where it looks like Ingram picked it up. Or that they got the spot wrong. Yeah, and I don't I don't think that Joe Vitt feels that there was any conclusive shot of it either. I think he just feels that it's worth a challenge knowing 
that in this situation if they have to punt giving the ball back to the 49ers with such good field position with still plenty of time left on the clock but an excellent job there on third and short defensively by the 49ers Isaac Sopoaga does an excellent job in the middle and just kind of points to how tough this 49ers defense is to run the football against. The play started outside two minutes left in the half so the challenge comes it's a Saints challenge it looks like it'll cost them a timeout and a challenge and we'll get the call from John Perry. After review the ruling on the field has been confirmed the runner was short New Orleans will be charged with their first team timeout. Only one challenge left that's the negative when you say well why not that's the negative there won't be a bonus and only one remaining in the game for the Saints who will punt it with Morstead and Kyle Williams is waiting for the punt instead of Ted Ginn Jr. who muffed the last one. So again put it on the ground that led to the last seven points. Now it's Kyle Williams. Fair catch. Back inside the 30 near the 27. Let's find out what's coming up on the Visa halftime. Here's Kurt. All right, we'll get you all caught up on the scores and highlights of the Visa halftime, including the Bears being on the right side of a blowout this time. An NFC South thriller as the Falcons just beat the Bucks, and it's Ryan Tannehill over Russell Wilson in the battle of Ricky QBs. It's all on the Visa halftime. Kurt, thanks. I thought it was interesting, Troy, when on Friday you asked Alex Smith how he would feel if he doesn't get the start today. Neither he nor Kaepernick. At least with what they told us on Friday, knew whether they were going to make the start at this at that point. And Alex said, "I'd be pretty ticked off." Well, I I tend to think that he knew. I mean, I really do. And I apply. Like I said, I don't disagree with the decision by Jim Harbaugh because he's doing what he thinks gives his team the best chance. But if I was Alex Smith, I don't know that I would have been as tight-lipped about it as he was and gone along with the program. Here's Manningham trying to get out of bounds, and he will. Only one timeout remaining for the 49ers Lofton out there to make the stop and, and maybe put this to bed after just a bit as you look at Steve Spagnuolo. If there's one guy in the NFL that as a starter could handle a benching and then come back and get his job if, if this thing goes south with Kaepernick you'd have to think it's Alex Smith with all he's been through in his career. He's well, dealt with a lot. He's handled some benchings already in his career and then of course the courtship of Peyton Manning which has been denied by the 49ers but it's Kaepernick keeping it he gets a yard third and short coming up. I mean clearly if if Peyton Manning had decided that he wanted to play for the 49ers he'd be playing here this afternoon and Alex Smith had to put that aside and and that's what you do but I don't know what his opportunities were during the offseason Joe but I've got to believe that if he had been offered a contract that he now wishes that he had taken it and left town. He got a modest deal, all things considered, with San Francisco. There was some courtship by the Dolphins over the offseason as Gore is forward for a first down, but the clock continues to wind with just over a minute to go, and the 49ers have to get going here, just a gain of three yards, down by seven. Well, he's certainly well versed with the no huddle. They call it the warp offense when he's in, and they've got, well, they can call plays. With just one word. Bad snap. Kaepernick picks it up and fires. He's picked off. Intercepted by Patrick Robinson. And it started with a bad snap. You can see the bad snap and how this impacts then. What happens on the play the balls on the ground Kaepernick cannot keep his eyes down the field and then you're going to see that the, the safety here is going out and because Kaepernick has his eyes down on the ground he's not able to properly read coverage and likely never even sees the corner Patrick Robinson who falls then underneath that route under Kyle Williams for the interception for Kaepernick his first pick. 
For the 49ers, their second turnover. The team that has the fewest giveaways in the NFL since the start of last season. Breeze going for a big one to Henderson. What a catch, but they're going to say out of bounds. Boy, that was some grab by Devery Henderson, who reached around Terrell Brown. It looked like it might have moved just enough. Well, his foot was out anyway. Initially, when it happened in real time, Joe, it looked like the ball may have been bobbled just a bit, but no, that was an excellent catch. He just was unable to get his right foot down within the field of play. Colin Kaepernick, that's last week, and in that game against the Bears, did a great job of, of not forcing any throws. I still think it goes back to the snap, which kept him from really being able to see what the Saints were doing defensively. Breeze with a pump back now, he's back. Back the other way, it's Brooks. And Ahmad Brooks is gonna go. Touchdown, 49ers. Ahmad Brooks with his first interception of the season and a 50-yard return. And we're an extra point away from a tie game. Here's Ahmad Brooks. You're going to see that Drew Brees, in his attempt to try to get Navarro Bowman to bite on the out route that was being shown. You see Jimmy Graham, he's trying to run a little double move there. He wants to move Navarro Bowman, but in the process of doing that, it draws then Ahmad Brooks, and, and Drew Brees never sees him. First career touchdown for Ahmad Brooks, who has his first pick of the season. So now the Saints and Drew Brees return the favor, but this one leads directly to points. That's the 10th interception thrown by Brees, and it's Brooks who went underneath it and returned it for the touchdown. It's an excellent job of, of catching the ball. You know, a lot of the times these linebackers are in a position to make a play, but, I mean, he showed great hands in being able to secure that ball. But no doubt that Drew Brees never saw Ahmad Brooks based on you know, him trying to then get Bowman to bite on that move that Jimmy Graham was running. And Colin Kaepernick's got to be pretty happy about that. And you know, certainly his play against the Bears drew a lot of praise, and rightfully so. But that defense on Monday night was spectacular. I mean, they hold the Bears to 143 yards of offense and that performance was lost a little bit because of all the excitement surrounding this young man. So the defense comes up with a score. It's a tie game 22 seconds left. And Jim Harbaugh is back there to pat Ahmad Brooks on the back that bails Kaepernick out of trouble as you said and Kaepernick was yelling the loudest and smiling the biggest when the defense came off the field. There to greet Brooks after the 50 yard touchdown on the return of the interception. Ahmad Brooks, he got his opportunity last year to become a full time starter. And Vic Fangio said when he picked him up from Cincinnati, he had a chance to resurrect his career, and he has done that the last year and a half for the 49ers. Bringing it out is Cadet. And he's out to the 18. Tonight on Fox, there's plenty to be thankful for, for thanks to animation domination. That was well read. So get ready to stuff yourself with an all new night of animation on Fox. Outrageous episodes make it your funniest Thanksgiving weekend ever, starting tonight at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. Good read there, Mr. Yeah. Buck. Thank you. Feel free to take the next one. <laughs> <laughs> From the 18, that's it. 14-14 game at the half. Should be some second half. With Drew Brees, number nine. Colin Kaepernick, number seven. Saints and the 49ers here in week 12. Half this game in the books. Kurt Menefee and the guys are in Los Angeles with the Visa halftime. The interception for the touchdown by Brooks has tied this game. America's Team of the Week, and you can follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. San Francisco will start this second half 
with the football, and that means Colin Kaepernick, who threw for over two, rather 10,000 yards in college, had three straight 1,000-yard rushing seasons. Only quarterback in NCAA history that can say that. Came into this game with only 35 completions in his NFL career in replacing a quarterback who was 25 and 1. Meaning 20 5 1 in his last 26 starts. And the drive will start at the 20. We go down to the field and Pam Oliver. Uh, Joe, Joe Vick's biggest concern was Colin Kaepernick and his ability to scramble. He said, We can't let him continue to beat us with his legs. We have to close off the edges. Look for more of running back Chris Ivory this half, too. Vick is hoping that he can give them a spark in the run game. Back to you. All right. Well, we'll see if they can do that with Kaepernick, who got loose a couple of times and has a rushing touchdown in this game. Yeah, no, I think overall in that first half, Colin Kaepernick, you know, played pretty well. And there's a tendency to think of him, you know, as a rookie quarterback. Certainly he's not. He's in his second year, and he has had playing time, of course, prior to last week's game against the Bears. Here's Gore left side. Haven't done much with the conventional running game, the 49ers, a gain of four. Look at the statistics through half the play. I think the one thing really more so than how Colin Kaepernick has played, I, I think the New Orleans defense came out and, and had a nice first half, you know, and, and keeping Frank Gore in check, and they know that they've got to be able to control that part of it. And I know that Joe Vitt said, hey, we can't allow Kaepernick to, to use his legs to beat us. But overall, I thought that defense did a nice job and continued on that upward trend that they have shown. Second down and six, it's Gore again. And Frank Gore is a couple of yards shy of a first down as he gets four. Yeah, and now you're looking at a at a third down situation to where, you know, in this ball game overall, the, the Saints haven't been too bad, and, and that's an area where they've gotten better as well. And typically teams that go on and win besides the takeaway and turnover battles are the teams that win on this down. And this is where Steve Spagnolo likes to come with some of his different kinds of looks. Third down and two. Kaepernick slipped. Now he's got Walker. Hits him in stride. Delaney Walker is knocked down inside the 30. And on third down and two, a completion to Walker of 45 yards. Well, the Saints, they bring Roman Harper, you know, on the blitz, and they were not anticipating third and short, you know, a ball being thrown that far down the field. You got Curtis Lofton, who's going to have to try to carry then Delaney Walker, as you see the shot to the head. And there should have been a flag on that play. But Delaney Walker, a guy who hasn't caught a lot of balls, but he's got excellent speed and does a nice job when given the opportunity. His longest of the year, 45 yards, is Kaepernick. Has time and throws wide to Crabtree. Well, that was a, let's go back to that third down call by Greg Roman. You know, I said, hey, this is where Steve Spagnuolo likes to come with some different things. He brings Roman Harper, they pick it up, and then they're able to isolate a guy in Delaney Walker, who is really used, Joe, primarily as a blocking guy. I'm surprised, actually, he only had eight catches coming into this game that he doesn't get more opportunity because he does a nice job when they do decide to go in his direction. He's got two catches in this game. Crabtree's been shut out. Kendall Hunter left side. Cuts up field and then tripped a bit and he's down near the five. Looked like Kendall Hunter almost lost his footing on that carry of 21 yards, but he has set up a first and goal. You see Kendall Hunter, and you know he's a great compliment to Frank Gore. And Frank Gore, with the moves that he has and his power style of running, and then Kendall Hunter, you know, he's quick and elusive, and he gets him down in here to the six-yard line. But this is where New Orleans defensively has been pretty good. Kaepernick, Gore, touchdown. Frank Gore is in with a touchdown catch, and that's his first of the year. 
Six yards for the go-ahead points here in New Orleans. Well, that wasn't played well at all by New Orleans. You're going to see as Kaepernick comes out, he could have run it himself in, or he could come out to Frank Gore as he decides to do, but that was a heck of a drive. And an excellent job, obviously, sparked at what, third and two to the pass to Delaney Walker. For 45 yards, then the run by Hunter. And now the touchdown pass of six yards to Gore. And this to make it a seven point lead again for the 49ers. Who led 7 0 early. 21 14. And the young 24 year old quarterback, Kaepernick, has a touchdown run, now a touchdown pass. And his 49ers lead by seven. Colin Kaepernick with an 80 yard drive that just took six plays. And the big one, the third and two, 45 yarder to Delaney Walker. Helps set it up. And so a seven point 49er lead against a Saints team that started 0 and 4, and there isn't really any margin for error. For the Saints the rest of the way, trying to dig out of that hole, they're 5 and 5. Cadet from inside the end zone. Out to the 29. So it was the Saints defense with some confusion on that touchdown throw to Frank Gore. And on the other side you've got the veteran Randy Moss. Talking with Kaepernick. After that 80 yard drive and as you said before I mean they signed. Pretty good indication you want to open it up if you bother to sign Randy Moss but he's not been a big factor. So far this year, and part of the reason why they switch to Kaepernick here in Week 12. Well, Randy Moss is lobbying to become a bigger factor. He's trying to explain to him how to drop that ball down into the basket when he's running up the side. <laughs> On first down, Breeze is brought down by Justin Smith. The ball came out, but they're going to whistle it as it remains with New Orleans a loss of eight, and Justin Smith, who came in. With just half a sack, was there in the face of Drew Brees. Well, he's a beast. I mean, he just he drives Ben Grubbs just directly into the lap of Drew Brees. And you know whether he's got a half a sack or ten sacks or no sacks, Joe. This guy is a force each and every week. I mean, he is constantly going and constantly getting pressure on the quarterback, even though he rarely this year has been able to get home. That's a first sack for either team in this game. Pass is tipped and picked. Dante Whitner off the hands of Colston, and Whitner is in for the touchdown. Colston made the hit. Whitner gets the interception, and Colston unable to get up after the hit from Deshaun Goldson. Well, that looks serious too, Joe. I mean, that's he came down, landed right on his head. You're going to see him right here in the slot. And a ball that's thrown high that he almost is able to pull in. He goes up mm. and then he gets hit and upended. It's good to see him get off the turf. Yeah, he pops up as Whitner turns in the second defensive touchdown of the game for the 49ers. Just able to hang on, and thankfully, Colston's okay as he goes to the sideline. With the return of 41 yards for the touchdown. Well, that's a great job defensively by San Francisco. And, you know, their pass defense this year, when you think about the team last year and how good they were on that side of the ball, they have gotten better. And the area where they've improved the most is in pass defense. What has not been as good is they haven't had the number of interceptions that they had last year. When they had the second most in the NFL, but this was a timely interception for them. And as you see, Dante Whitner, who's just in a great position to catch the deflection after it goes through the hands then of Marcus Colston after being upended by Deshaun Goldson. 49ers had 23 interceptions last year, part of 38 takeaways. And I don't know how somebody gets up after. Landing on the neck and shoulder like that, but thankfully Colston did. But as you said, this is a better defense than it was a year ago. Last year they had all the takeaways, 38. You're not going to get that year after year. So they've gotten better in pass defense, 
in run defense points against their number one. Vic Fangio has just done a great job. He was brought along from Stanford by Jim Harbaugh and a guy who used to coach here in New Orleans. He coached the linebackers in the mid 80s through 1994. He's got this unit just humming right now. Well he does and he had him playing obviously very well last year all 11 starters come back and a longtime NFL coach in this league. It's the third team that he's been a defensive coordinator for and he just spent the one season there at Stanford with Jim Harbaugh prior to coming back into the league last year for these 49ers. Akers makes it a 14 point game. Marcus Colston thankfully able to get up but he leaves the playing field into the locker room Saints offense will go back to work down by 14. 49ers have scored three touchdowns over the last three minutes 52 seconds with two interceptions for touchdowns against Drew Brees who looks like he's itching to get back out there down by 14. He'll get his chance. As Akers kicks it away. Cadet will stay in. Drive will start at the 20 college football's biggest championship games return to Fox Friday. It's the Pac-12 championship live in prime time. 17th ranked UCLA Bruins take on the 8th ranked Cardinal of Stanford. Saturday the Big Ten championship 14th ranked Nebraska takes on Wisconsin. Pac-12 Big Ten championships only on Fox. I guess the Fighting Irish are for real this year. Yeah, I guess so. They won at USC last night. Sure did. And now 11:30 left in this third quarter. Ready for shot. See what the number five offense in the league can muster. Here's Ivory, right side. Nice start to the drive as he gets seven. Let's go to Kurt Menefee for a game break. Well, of course, the Cardinals have lost six straight. The Rams winless in their last five, and so somebody hopefully will break that streak today. Chris Gibbons is trying to help the Rams do that. Nice 37-yard score from Sam Bradford, and the Rams have their first lead at 21-17 in the third quarter. Throw to and Pam. Rookies become a big play receiver in a short while for St. Louis that needed that. Second down and three. Mike by three. Ready. Blue 20. Blue 20. That's Joseph Morgan circled by Troy, and that's Ivory. And that's a first down for New Orleans. They do it on the ground. Yeah, they'll try to try to get Chris Ivory going a little bit here. Obviously down 14 points. Haven't run the ball all that well, but you know, how long will they be able to stick with it? And, you know, we heard that. Joe Vitt, when he talked to Pam Oliver, say that, hey, you know, we had used Mark Ingram some there in that first half, but hadn't really gotten a lot of production out of him. We're going to see what Chris Ivory can do in the last couple runs for him. He's been pretty productive. Ready? You ready? Let's shot. Saints averaging just 2.6 yards per carry today as Thomas, he was a favorite target in that first half, sits down with a nine yard game. The two turnovers today. By Drew Brees, leading directly to points. Amon Brooks with less than a minute to go in the first half, and then Colston off his hands into the arms of Whitner for another defensive score. Yeah, that first one, as we talked about, is just you know, really on Drew Brees and not seeing Ahmad Brooks, and then the last one was a was just an errant throw, a ball normally that Marcus Colston makes, but. Carry for a first down by Ingram. You know, Colston obviously not able to make the catch and then being upended. Who knows if he'd have been, if been able to hold on anyway. But, you know, now they go with Mark Ingram. That's what I was talking about a little earlier in this game as far as how they're going to handle this whole. Yeah, that's a hard thing to manage. You know, when you've got that many guys and you're rotating them through, it's good when someone goes down. But Mark Ingram, who really had not run the ball very well through the first seven games of this year, maybe that was because of injury. But he has been healthy, and prior to this game, he has been running the ball very, very well in the last three weeks. On first down, Breeze has all day down the field for more. A lot of contact and a catch at the 10. That'll be against Terrell Brown, and that will count as a 43-yarder to Lance Moore. 
This is another one of those routes where you better have good protection up front because you're going to let this receiver, Lance Moore, get down the field before you cut it loose. And that's exactly what Drew Brees had in the pocket. I mean, they protected him very well. And I got to tell you, this William Robinson over here at right tackle who came in for the injured Bryce Harris, he's done a nice job so far in this game. How about the job done by the group, as you talk about, coached by Aaron Cromer, who was the acting head coach, went two and four in place of Sean Payton. They've been great against a tough pass rush. How about Ivory? He gets five, and now one of the yards was easy. Second and goal from the five. Well, he just brings a, a, some real toughness, Joe, when you're talking about you know, being able to hit it in there, and that's that's what it takes against this San Francisco defense because you, you can't bounce things, you can't wait around in the hole. I mean, you really need to just get the ball and go and be physical and finish the runs, and that's what we've seen here from Chris Ivory. You expect the Saints to throw it in. Yellow, yellow, ready, yellow, waiting, yellow, waiting, ready. Blue 90, black side. Brown game's been good on this drive. They fake it. Penalty flag flies as Graham makes the catch. He stopped short, but there is a flag on the play. Thrown right after the snap. Prior to the pass, holding defense. To the line, after the distance to the goal, automatic first down. I believe they got Culliver. That's 29. Culliver guilty of a hold right here. Now you see the grab. At the end of that play, this, this San Francisco defense, the way they swarm to the football after a guy makes a catch, there were, there were four gold helmets that made the play at the end. Kill, 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 First and goal. Freeze. Incomplete for Lance Moore. Lance Moore got him down here with a 43-yard catch. Now second and goal. Drew Brees a little frustrated with himself on, on that last throw. That's one that he usually makes in his sleep. Lance Moore got some separation, and Brees just let him a little too much. Moore has four touchdown catches for the season. They're without Marcus Colston, their big bodied receiver. Ready! You ready, watch that! Pass is caught. Collins for the touchdown. Bowman he's the one who has to then run with him and because of the traffic and congestion he's got to hesitate just enough and that allows Jed Collins then to get out in the flat and that's that's not an easy catch to make you see the where the ball was but Jed Collins makes it very easily and then he's able to turn it up and get it inside the pylon the running game, Troy, wasn't spectacular on that drive, but it was enough to get that drive started. And for Jed Collins, his second touchdown catch, all set up by the 43-yarder to Lance Moore. It's a seven-point game in New Orleans. 51st time in the career of Drew Brees. He's had three or more touchdown passes. The Saints are three for three in the red zone. And that last play started at the 20, ended up in the end zone in the hands of the fullback, Jed Collins. Well, that was a big-time drive by Drew Brees in that offense, down 14 points and a couple errant throws and touchdowns returned, interceptions returned for touchdowns, but Brees orchestrates a nice drive to cut this to seven. Morstead drills it. Now Kaepernick and the 49ers up by seven. Start at the 20 when we come back. Big plays have been a part of the offense for San Francisco, averaging over eight yards per play with Kaepernick at the controls. It had four plays of 20 or more yards in this game. Two on their last drive. When they took the lead, then a defensive touchdown made it a 14-point game, and Drew Brees with an answer. Well, the big plays have been the undoing of this defense all season long. Crowd back 
into it. Kaepernick throws and finds Crabtree, who is going to be marked down at the 26. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, Marcus Colston left the field for a good long while during that Saints drive. He went back into the locker room and underwent a concussion test. They said he has passed that test and he will return. Checking on his neck, so pass the concussion test. And let's go back to that. As Crabtree said, he wasn't down, yeah. and he wasn't down. No, I, I didn't think he was either, Joe. And, and based on his reaction, then you had a pretty good feeling that he wasn't because he couldn't believe that they had blown the whistle. Remember Brandon Jacobs? He's in the game. And that's his first carry as a San Francisco 49er. And it's good for a first down. I mean, this is a guy. And now flags Holding. are down. Number 68, offense. 10 yard penalty. Second down. They get Leonard Davis. Brandon Jacobs, Troy, joined this 49ers team. Guy with 12 career 100 yard games, a ton of touchdowns with the Giants, and that was his first carry here in week 12. And it's eliminated <laughs> by penalty. Well, I'm just. I'm kind of wondering why they gave him one now. You know, I mean, he, they, when they brought him in, he was still kind of battling the knee and got injured there in preseason, and it was understandable, but he's gone a long time without getting any action. Blitz coming. 49ers pick it up, and the pass incomplete for Kendall Hunter. Kaepernick having to backpedal as he let that one go. It's third and 14. Yeah, that was close, too. I mean, had they have been able to make a connection on that ball, we would have been talking about another big play against this Saints defense. The hold against Davis, Leonard Davis, eliminated a first down, now third and 14. It's so loud, but it's a delay of game. Play clock expired. Well, you saw when they broke the huddle that Colin Kaepernick was talking with Frank Gore, and it looked to me like they were trying to work through protection. And then as Colin Kaepernick's trying to figure out, okay, what exactly are the Saints doing here? You know, the ball was the tick late coming up at one time they wouldn't have called that they they call that a little tighter than what they were just a few years ago now third and 19. Hand off to Gore. And Gore will be stopped. After a gain of 12. It'll be fourth down. That's good. Good safe call there by by Greg Roman. You know, backed up and crowd noise. You can't communicate as well as you'd like, and chances of converting and picking up that first down aren't obviously very good. And just play it safe, get as much yardage as you can, and see if you can maybe get a little extra out of this punt. Lee's been a good one, an All Pro last year. Number five in net yardage this season. Sproles from inside the 40. A lot of moves, but just down to the 41. Three-yard return. Take a break. Come back. Defense getting it going for the Saints. Came up with a stop on third and long. Saints have it down seven. The Niners own the top spot in the NFC West at 7-2-1. and one. New Orleans Saints are alive in the NFC wild card chase. In the South, they trail the 10 and 1 Atlanta Falcons. Trying to get to 6 and 5 here today, down by 7. Saw Colston back on the field, not in the lineup as Ivory almost broke it. And then Goldson lays the hit at the end of the play after Brown made the stop a gain of 6. You saw Jet Collins make that catch on the touchdown, and he comes right. Through the line, you're going to see. I mean, this is the job of fullback. You get to go mano a mano on a linebacker, and he just puts him on his back. 
I think everybody kind of thought that that Chris Ivory was done in the pile and he came out of it. That was Navarro Bowman that he took care of. Saw Colston check back in on second and four. Breeze. Off the hands of Graham. Terrell Brown on his back. Third and four coming up. Call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile now and get coverage of every NFL game. Jimmy Graham just two catches for 16 yards in this game. And that's one that he typically hauls in. Yeah, even though it obviously a, not an easy catch. I mean, he has to stretch out for it, but you're, you're right. And you just come to expect him to make that play. On third down and four, Breeze quick set up and throw, and he's got Sproles. And Sproles has got a first down inside the 45, the gain of 11. Right here, you're going to see Ahmad Brooks as Sproles comes across, and he kind of gets tied up a little bit too, and he's able to get then Sproles into the flat, drop it in there, and you know Sproles, of course, as we talked about, his first game back in the last four weeks, and, and they're monitoring his snaps, but prior to that, he'd been relatively quiet. Mike five three, Omaha, Omaha, On first down, the handoff is to Ingram. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's it. First guy there was Ricky Jean Francois. Whitner stuck his nose in there as well. One of the most active safeties in the NFL, Dante Whitner, as you look at how Drew Brees likes to spread it around. Well, he's got so many guys that he has such confidence in, and that's why the numbers reflect that. You know, I mean, whenever a guy goes down, he, he really does that. If you're on the field, he trusts you're going to make plays for him. Green steps up, looking downfield, and it's broken up by Carlos Rogers. They're going to throw a flag. Joseph Morgan, the intended receiver. Well, Joseph Morgan comes into the game, and because of his speed, you know, they want to get him deep. We we'll see who makes the. And we see that Carlos Rogers. Pass interference, his. offense number 13. 10 yard penalty, replay second down. They get Morgan, I think, for grabbing the left arm of Carlos Rogers. Well, and he eliminated what could have been an interception by doing it. You see right there is what they called. I mean, there was contact slightly there with the left arm of Carlos Rogers, and then you know, just a little bit of a grab there by Joseph Morgan. I thought they both did about the same as far as contact was concerned. I wasn't real sure where that call was going to go, if they were going to call it on Rodgers or if it was going to be offensive pass interference, but that's the grab there that they get Joseph Morgan on. And he likely makes the interception if that doesn't happen. I agree. A guy who, and Carlos Rodgers had six a year ago as a pro bowler, does not have one yet. Was in good position. Bree steps up and throws it into the turf in the direction of Pierre Thomas. And now third down and 20. So the pass interference call moved it back 10. The incompletion now third down and 20. With this Saints team down by seven. And they've been sacked once. That sack belongs to that man, Justin Smith. Smith, the league's leading sack man, and he gets number 16. Well, it's the first time I've seen Alden Smith line up on the opposite side. So then he's rushing from the offense's right position right into the face then of Drew Brees, and he immediately is able to get to the pressure. Prof, prior to that, they had kept him relatively quiet. But he lines up opposite, and then he comes off the edge and gets right into the face of Drew Brees. 
Kyle Williams waiting for the punt. He will call a fair catch. Back just outside the five. And so now back to work is Colin Kaepernick, and that was the big headline coming into the game, the play of Kaepernick and what he did against Chicago. And while we'll see him take over on the field right now, what do you think of his play so far? Well, I think he's done a nice job. You know, I mean, he had the, the one interception. I think he's hung in there. He's, he's, when he's had to move, he's been able to make plays with his feet. Certainly he's thrown the ball well. I think what we talked about coming in, as good as that performance was against Chicago, and then as much as you would think that, okay, well, this defense isn't as good as the Bears, this should be easier. You know, this crowd and this hostile environment against an improved defensive team has proven to be a little bit tougher challenge. From the six. Hand off to Gore, and that's Lofton. Who made the play, gain of two. And the day for Colin Kaepernick, second consecutive start. He ran one in. Threw a pick, and he threw one in to Frank Gore, which gave the 49ers a seven-point lead, then a defensive touchdown. Since then, a Saints touchdown to Collins. It's 28-21. On second down, the pass is caught by Crabtree. Showing off the velocity in a 15-yard completion to number 15. Uh, he just shows really great poise in the pocket. You know, I mean, he sees the coverage, and you, that's, you've had, you have to drive that ball in there just as he did. You know, if you lay that one, try to lob it in there, the receiver's going to have a hard time making a play before he's out of bounds, or a defender's going to make a play on the ball, and you've got to be able to drive it in the hole, and he did exactly what needed to be done. First down at the 23, a toss to Hunter running left. A gain of one. Maybe one and a half, and we'll go to Kurt for a game break. Well, I know the Niners defense has two interceptions returned for touchdowns in your game, but how about Janoris Jenkins for the Rams? He's got two pick sixes alone. Both off Ryan Lindley, who's making his first start. That one returned 39 yards, and the Rams on top 28-17 as they get ready to start the fourth quarter. Joe Troy and Pam. All right, thanks, Kurt. Hunter, who went down on that last play, is getting looked at on the field. Actually, two 49ers are down. Kyle Williams down as well. Second and eight when we come back for the 49ers of seven. Costly two-yard play for the 49ers as Hunter came out, and Kyle Williams doesn't look good at all. Watch Kyle Williams just go down in a heap. You see that knee give out, the left knee, and then he got a hit. And here's Hunter at the end of the play. He got rolled up on by Vilma. But Kyle Williams, that looked pretty serious. Well, it was Vilma that hit Kyle Williams, and then it was Vilma that rolled up on Hunter. Second and eight. Kaepernick fires to Manningham, and Mario Manningham may have given up a yard. He is brought down just outside the 30, a gain of six. Third and short coming up, and that can be the end of the third quarter if the 49ers want it to be. And it looks like they do. Good game. 49ers won it. Saints desperately needed 28 21 fourth quarter when we come back after this from your local Fox station as we return here in New Orleans a seven point game it's third down for the 49ers America's game of the week third down and two and both Williams and Hunter will be carted off the field. This is a very deep roster for the 49ers. In fact, their top two picks, A.J. Jenkins and the Michael James, have made no impact. A wide receiver and a running back. As a wide receiver and running back get carted off. Third and two. Saints don't have a sack today. Pass is caught. What a grab by Crabtree. 
He adjusted to it, made the catch, and gets five, a third down conversion for Kaepernick and the 49ers. Really an excellent job by Michael Crabtree of being able to make this make this catch. Colin Kaepernick, he leads him to the inside. Crabtree, he, he goes and gets it. You know, we saw Kendall Hunter being parted off, and now you know, we may see a little bit more of Brandon Jacobs. Fullback Miller was in motion now, and it's Gore, and he gets nothing. Often was in there, as well as Cedric Ellis and Cameron Jordan, no game. This possession for the Saints defensively becomes pretty important. You know, right now looking at a seven point deficit into the fourth quarter, and you know, a field goal they may be able to overcome, but a couple touchdowns against this 49ers defense, that might prove too much. This, this is going to be an important defensive possession for the Saints. Kaepernick keeps it, being chased. And gets nothing. It was Lofton who chased him. No gain on the play. And now third down and long coming up. Kaepernick very good with that play fake. He hung on to it. Well, that's who they're reading. And he drives it down. And so Kaepernick thinks that, okay, I'm reading that end. He comes down and I pull it and I should have be, I should be able to get on the corner. But they scrape Lofton off the edge, and then he was there to make a play on that. That was pretty well designed defense by Steve Spagnuolo. Now third and ten. Kaepernick down the middle has got a man and a first down. What a catch by Delaney Walker. Delaney Walker's already got a 45 yarder. This one good for 25. And a player is down, I believe it's Isa Abdul Kadus. You look at the pocket right there that Colin Kaepernick has to survey the field and decide where he wants to go with his football. And then once he makes that decision, he makes a nice throw. Again, Delaney Walker there to make a play when they needed him to make a play. That's great poise in the pocket by Colin Kaepernick and delivering the football. And that's probably what. What I've been as impressed with as anything is for a guy just in his second year making a second NFL start. I mean, it's obvious he is playing with tremendous confidence for the last two weeks. And that's exactly what you talked about, the big play stuff. Six completions of 20 or more yards against the Bears and that great defense. Four of 20 or more yards in this game against the Saints after Alex Smith had 22 over nine starts. So down the field go the 49ers and while they check on Isa Abdul Kadus, we'll go to Kurt for a game break. All right, Baltimore and San Diego on a close one down the stretch. Joe Flacco hooking up with Dennis Pitta. First offensive touchdown for the Ravens in eight quarters. That pulls them to within three, and they've got the ball just over three minutes left to play. Joe Troy and Pitt. All right, Kurt, thanks. So Abdul Kadus is getting looked at and it was Issa who made this hit on Delaney Walker. What a catch by Walker. And thankfully Abdul Kadus is on, on a knee and it looks like he'll be okay to take himself off the field. Some of the early game headliners as we play here in the last half of Week number 12 around the NFL, Andy Dalton with three touchdown passes, and for Cincinnati, they go to six and five now with their win over their former teammate Carson Palmer and the Oakland Raiders. Jake Cutler, part of a big day for the Bears, good day for their defense again. And Julio Jones, he's been nicked up over the past couple of weeks. He chips in as the Atlanta Falcons get a win on the road in Tampa Bay to go to 10 and 1. Yeah, and I don't know that a lot of people saw that happening with the Atlanta Falcons. You know, I mean, people have been questioning who they've been playing and then going on the road against a pretty hot team in Tampa Bay. They were in a dogfight, but yet they were able to pull it out. Anthony Dixon in a tailback. First down at the 40 after that 25 yarder to Walker. This is Miller and the fullback. Gets by the tackle of Harper. 
Gains two brought down by Vilma. He's talking about Colin Kaepernick's poise and you know Joe and visiting with him this week. I, you know I asked him what he felt his greatest asset was or his real strength and you know he was quick to point out I, I think it's my mental approach to the game my mental toughness and he says you know that tends to get overlooked because of his athletic ability but it's pretty obvious he's a real student of the game and puts in a lot of time based on what I've seen of him throwing the football. Here's a toss to Dixon running left. Had a big preseason and forced his way onto the roster Dixon. Good for five and for an injury report down to Pam Oliver. Well, Kyle Williams, Joe, he is out with a knee injury. Also, Kendall Hunter, he is questionable with an ankle injury. Back to you. Third down and three. Jim Harbaugh views this as four down territory. Play fake. Miller underneath, and the fullback's got a first down for San Francisco. He gets nine on third and three, and that is three third down conversions on this drive for young Colin Kaepernick. That's kind of out of the old playbook of Bill Walsh right there. You, know, you go split back, you fake it one way, and then you bring the fullback underneath all that. He tends to get lost because of the play action. And they pick up an easy first down. Bruce Miller, three catches, 37 yards in this game. Here is a carry by Gore. And Gore is down to the 10. And this is a great drive being put together by San Francisco right when they need it. Well it is and now they're getting Frank Gore going a little bit and you know this defense had it held up pretty well as I said through the first half of this game and you know on a possession here that is really important. They just been unable to make a stop on a couple third downs and then the, the game there on that last play by Frank Gore. This drive started at the 49 or six yard line. Here they are at the Saints 10. And now they'll be at the Saints 15. Ball start. Right guard. Five yard penalty. Replay. First down. Kaepernick has shown a lot. Here's the false start, and the right guard, Alex Boone, wasn't alone. to Gore. Gore is down to the five. A ten yard carry by Frank Gore and this crowd is more and more being taken out of it by this long drive by the 49ers. Well they're just able to get that ball handed off to Frank Gore and Will Smith looked like he might have been able to make a play on that and a collision in the backfield but Joe Staley the left tackle. He's able to get enough of Smith, and then Gore got inside of that block. Second and goal. Moss nearly picked off Jenkins. Once a flag won't get it. I don't blame him, Joe. I mean, this is a good play by Randy Moss, but it should have been offensive pass interference. He sees him, and then he pulls him to the ground. I mean, it's an excellent job by Randy Moss recognizing the situation and knowing that Malcolm Jenkins, who is typically their safety but is playing some corner because of injury, was in a position to make the interception. And, but it should have been a flag. 15th play of the drive. Third down and goal. down immediately by Lofton. A loss 
So four on the play will bring Akers out to try and make it a 10 point game. Well we'll find out as this game moves along as to how significant that stop was there you know, inside the red zone. That's something that this defense has improved upon. They've been able to make some plays from time to time in recent weeks when they've had to. And as I said a field goal here even though that puts the 49ers up 10. I think that the Saints have a chance to overcome that where it's two touchdowns I'm not so sure. But a seven yard try is drilled by Akers. And it was a long drive around nine minutes nine and a half just about put up by the 49ers who lead by ten. You know they say you throw around the word great too much on NFL broadcasts and if that wasn't a great drive it was pretty darn good. That was the fourth longest drive by any team in the NFL this year put together by Kaepernick and the 49ers. It started at their own six with 218 left in the third quarter. It ends with 750 left in the game and it's Steve Spagnuolo's charge as the defensive coordinator of the Saints to get the ball back in the hands of Drew Brees who is now down by 10 as Cadet takes it out of the end zone and crosses the 20. So Brees and company will go back to work. Moss may have helped Kaepernick avoid an interception. And all the Saints can do is shake their head down 10. Left in the game it's been 24 minutes since Drew Brees in this good Saints offense has been out on the field trying to do something about this deficit which has now grown to 10. That well, was an excellent drive offensively by San Francisco clearly to move the length of the field but it looked like a foregone conclusion that they were going to come out of that with a touchdown. They only got three and now a sack third of the day. And Alden Smith is on the bottom of that pile as well as Justin Smith. Right here that right side defensively they run the game and they're able to get Alden Smith he turns loose and then they come underneath with Justin Smith and he gets home also right now the 49ers I mean clearly they understand the situation and the Saints have to pick up a lot of yardage in a hurry and they're pinning their ears back and they're coming after Pass is underneath the Henderson. That ball came out, no catch. Each Smith, Justin Smith and Alden Smith, with a sack and a half in this game. And that now means that Alden Smith is one full sack shy of a new record for total sacks over the first two years of an NFL career to move in front of Reggie White. He is already in front of Derek Thomas. They're going to say incomplete pass. Going to the ground. Pass was. Pass was caught. caught. But they said incomplete pass. And the Saints will challenge it. It'll be third and long either way when we come back. Coming up immediately after the game the OT looks like this call will be reversed but it's just a six yard gain in field position. Here's a call after reviewing the play it is a catch the ball did not touch the ground. It'll be third down on the 21 yard line right hash the game clock will start and we're ready for play. So it's about a third and 12 for Jill Vitt's team. With the ball at the 21. And Jim Harbaugh trying to communicate something here to the official. I'm not sure exactly what that is. It looks like he's trying to say the ball should be at the 18. But they've got it at the right spot. But he's going to make these officials at least question themselves. And they're satisfied as you watch the catch there at the 21. So it's third down and 12. Brees needs a conversion. Down the middle as receiver stumbled and they're going to throw flags in coverage. 
And maybe Lance Moore didn't stumble. Maybe he was interfered with or held. It'll be a hold against San Francisco. And Drew Brees didn't see that at all. You know, I mean, he's in the pocket and he knows how important this third down play is, and he's got pressure in his face. Fire and he just thought he'd give him hold. a chance. Thrown, holding, defense, number 29, five yard penalty, and an automatic first down. He's just trying to give Lance Moore a chance. You watch Drew Brees here in the pocket, and the pressure that happens, again, it's Justin Smith right in his face. And he just says, hey, I'm going to give my guy a shot and see if he can maybe make a play here on third down for me. And they get the hold. I, I don't know that Lance Moore was going to be able to get to that ball even without the hold. But a big penalty to keep this drive alive. Yeah, it's an automatic first down, five-yard penalty. And with 6.44 left, first down at the 26. Blitz off the edge. Breeze finds his man. Pass is caught by Moore. The ball comes out. And the officials have yet to rule on it. Moore slow to get up. But no call from the officials yet. They congregated the 35 yard line. It's definitely a catch. The ball does come out, but it looked like the knee may have been down. But there's still no call. These safeties, Deshaun Goldson, Dante Widner, I tell you, you catch a ball in the middle of the field, you better expect to get hit. And Deshaun Goldson came in with his shoulder, you know, legal hit, was not a defenseless receiver. Hey, Troy, this is a big call because remember the The ruling Saints on the field is a catch and down by contact. That's a good call for the Saints. It looked like the right call, but the Saints don't have any challenges left. So had that gone the other way, it looked like Moore was down. That was the call. The Saints would have been able to do nothing about it. You see Jim Harbaugh, he's, he's wanting to challenge the call. They're telling him. Well, I guess they're telling him that it's okay that they can. Now they're going to see if they, that if he's down, if if he wasn't down by contact, if the ball was completed. Kind of what happened earlier in the game as far as the recovery of a fumble. I think they're going to take more in and check him. San Francisco challenged the ruling of the play of a catch and down by contact versus a catch and fumble. We'll review the play. Time out on the field. So we'll take a break. We'll sort it out during the break. Ruling on the field is a catch and then down by contact, no fumble. It's being challenged by the 49ers. We're checking in with Mike Ferreira. We'll hear from him after this. Los Angeles, what'd you see? Well, I think it's a catch and down by contact. I think the right elbow's down before the ball gets loose. I think it's too close to overturn it to anything other than that. You could look to see if the pass is complete or not, which I think it is. He braces for the contact. We'll get the call now from John Perry. It was ruled an 11 yard catch. No fumble down by contact. Here it is. After reviewing the play, the play stands as called. San Francisco is charged. The first team timeout. The game clock will start on the snap due to the timeout. So now only one challenge remains. It belongs to San Francisco. And it's a first down for New Orleans with a ball at their own 37. the day for Braves the two interceptions for touchdowns one by Brooks one by Whitman Braves just throws it into the turf take a look ahead at the slate of games next week here on Fox the Vikings at the Packers big early game 49ers at Rams Cardinals Jets Seahawks Bears Bucks play late. It was a big day for a team like New Orleans because of what happened earlier today. Tampa Bay in front of them, they lost. The Vikings in front of them, they lost. The Seahawks in front of them in the wild card chase, and they lost. 
Here's a second down play. Pass is caught. That's Colston back in the game after that vicious hit. Good for seven. See Jimmy Graham, Patrick Willis doing a good job on him. And once again, Deshaun Goldson. He's there to finish off Marcus Colston as soon as he makes the catch. Right now, the 49ers defensively, they're getting some pressure. On the last play, Ray McDonald, I mean, he's just walking his guy right back into the lap of Drew Brees. He's been under duress here on this possession. Third down three. Brees in trouble and sacked again. Fourth of the day for San Francisco. Willis was in there, Brooks as well. And now it's fourth down. It's overmatched. I mean, you see Sproles here. He gets overmatched with Patrick Willis deciding to come. And then, of course, Ahmad Brooks on the outside again with William Robinson playing the right tackle position because they're so thin right now due to injury. But Drew Brees just has not had much time to really look at where he wants to go with the football. Fourth down and 11. Down by 10. This one is broken up. Terrell Brown got his hand in front of Joseph Morgan. Brown made the play, and the 49ers will take over, leading by 10 with 5.06 left. Thought there might have been contact before that ball was there. And there definitely was contact made on the play. I was surprised, Joe, not to see a flag. Terrell Brown is there. I think it was because of the ball placement that was forcing Morgan then to go back to the sideline. Drew Brees trying to shape him to the sidelines, and it was because he was having to work back that way that the official maybe didn't view it as as much contact as was there. Drew Brees didn't argue the non-call, nor did Joseph Morgan, which is kind of understandable because he's such a young player. But nobody seemed to be too upset with the fact that there was not pass interference called on the play. Kill, kill, kill! Hand off is to Gore running left. And Gore is back to the line of scrimmage. Roman Harper is there to make the stop. And just to finish, I mean, here's a New Orleans team that's won five of six. They've got five wins, but the team's immediately in front of them who would claim that second wild card spot have only six victories. So teams like Washington, Dallas, Minnesota, Tampa Bay, New Orleans, and Seattle are all right there. New Orleans with a big Thursday night game coming up in Atlanta. I think it's a point well made, Joe, and you know, because of Atlanta winning, I mean, clearly even if they had lost, it was going to be awfully tough for the Saints. I mean, they're looking at a wild card if they're able to get in. There's a lot of teams as you said that are going to be battling it out for those spots there's their remaining schedule they just used their first time out of this second half they're at Atlanta then at the Giants and they're at home against Tampa Bay at Dallas and hosting Carolina second and 11 and off to Gore. Gore is brought down at the 32 by Curtis Lofton. Let's go to Kurt for a game break. Well, like the Saints in your game, Baltimore was down by 10 with less than five minutes left against San Diego. But they got a touchdown and then driving fourth and 29. Dump it off to Ray Rice. Three charges missed. He gets a block from Anquan Bolden and just gets the first down. That set up a game-time field goal. They even it at 13 and send it to overtime. Great individual effort. Great team effort. There by Baltimore. Joe Troy, Pam. Wow. And to confirm on fourth and 29 to have a chance to tie. There'll be a lot written about the San Diego defense on that. Can't happen. Ray Rice or not. Now third down and six. We haven't seen Alex Smith all day. If there was ever any thought of bringing him in at any point today. Splitting reps. Kaepernick got work when Smith the starting quarterback but it's been all Colin Kaepernick today third down and six Kaepernick keeps it and is in trouble wisely gets rid of it a sack 
would have pushed the 49ers out of field goal range. Pressure by Cameron Jordan and Kaepernick comes away smiling with 447 left. Well, you're right. He does a good job of recognizing it's not there, getting the ball out. When you talk about this whole wild card situation, Joe, and you know, as we said earlier, you know, to start out the way they did and to climb back, you just wonder if they're going to have enough gas to make it interesting the rest of the way. 50-yard try to make it a 13-point game, and that's not close. And so there's still time remaining as the 49ers were unable to get a first down on that possession. And we give you a recap of what we've seen here today. It went back and forth in the first half as Kaepernick ran one in. Later on in this second half, he found Frank Gore. Ahmad Brooks with an interception return for a touchdown. Then after a tip, Dante Whitner with an interception return for a touchdown. Collins made it a seven-point game, but Drew Brees, as you've mentioned, has been under heavy pressure in this second half. And it's been the defensive line, the last sack belonging to the linebacker group of Drew Brees. Well, they, you know, you think about the decision there by Harbaugh to go with the guy in, in Acres who has not been as consistent this year as he was a year ago by not making the field goal and making it a two touchdown game. They give the Saints great field position. And down goes Brees again. Ahmad Brooks, who's had a big day with a pick for an interception and a touchdown, a loss of eight. And Breeze has no time in the pocket anymore. Well, right now, the offensive line is, is really just overwhelmed. You see the move there. Ahmad Brooks, he comes in, and you know, those are the kinds of things that San Francisco does. They run a lot of games, a lot of twists along the defensive line. They, make, they test you in all the things they do. Underneath it, Sproles trying to get out of bounds, and he does. Good to see Lance Moore back in there after jogging off. They checked him for a concussion. He is able to play an eight-yard gain with 4.09 left. One timeout on the scoreboard for the Saints, down by 10. 49er defense came in, ranked number one in the NFL, allowing under 13 and a half points per game. It's third down and 10. Well, it's coming. Breeze finds Sproles. Good catch, but he's short of a first down. So fourth down coming up. Carl Bowman out there in coverage for the 49ers. Well, even when, <laughs> even when they get bodies on these pass rushers, I mean, they just are not holding up very well. So Drew Brees constantly has has people in his face. I I know what he wants to do he wants to try to get the ball down the field and they have the players and the type of guys that can go get it he just hasn't been able to hold it long enough to make it happen five sacks today for the 49ers and they'll be coming after Breeze again on fourth and five special 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 ready just got it away Breeze with a hand on him he fires incomplete no flag Lance Moore, the intended receiver. Carlos Rogers back there in coverage as the 49ers take over. You see Lance Moore at the end of this route. I wasn't quite sure when he turned around that way. I don't know if he misjudged the ball in flight, but if he just runs and stays, tries to get to the outside, maybe he can he can make a play on that ball. But he was expecting there to be some a flag, definitely some contact. You know to how much so to draw the flag but Drew Brees once again in the pocket just having to avoid pass rushers to get the ball at least an attempt down the seam. He had a hand on him when he let that one fly. And now the 49ers who are looking at a road victory with their young quarterback at the controls handoff to Gore running right. First down inside the 35 and only one timeout remaining for the Saints. An 11 yard carry by Frank Gore. And the Saints spend their final timeout. Gore came into this game 15th in the NFL in rushing attempts, but it's kept him more fresh for the fourth quarter, averaging over seven yards a carry in the fourth quarter. That's the best average among NFC running backs. Fox's football coverage doesn't end when the games are over. The OT, Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy.
have extended highlights, expert analysis, interviews, and a look ahead to next week's action. It's presented by Lowe's, the OT, right after the football action here on Fox. Well, I think, Joe, you look at this game, you've got to give the 49ers some real credit on the way that they came in against a team that had been playing really good football and forced the decision by Jim Harbaugh and the staff to go with Colin Kaepernick. And, you know, I still think, though, it's some, you know, he's going to be the guy here on out. But I, I still have a feeling that they're going to have to rely on Alex Smith at some point before this season's over. Here's Gore to the 30 and just beyond. No timeouts remaining. As you look at the remaining schedule for the 49ers, they are in St. Louis next at home against Miami at New England. At Seattle, then they host Arizona. Well, Jim Harbaugh, they said he used to play the quarterback position with an offensive lineman's mentality. He's a guy who was a tough quarterback, was involved in a quarterback controversy himself as a player back in 89 with Mike Tomzak. A bitter battle for time in 89 when Tomzak got 11 starts, Harbaugh got five. And he's gone to his guy Kaepernick, a little delay by Gore. Brought down right at the marker, but a flag is down as well. You know, Joe, I heard somebody last week suggest that maybe Jim Harbaugh didn't know the weight of his words following that Personal Monday foul, night game. Mass, defense number 15, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. When he praised the performance of Colin Kaepernick so much after the game because of the controversy, obviously, that was going to surround those comments. But he knows exactly what he was doing, and a lot of it, you know, one, he's been coaching for a while. This isn't his first time around the block, but more importantly, to go back to what you said, being a part of a quarterback controversy when he was playing there in Chicago. He knows full well, and that's why knowing what a, a great team he has and knowing how disruptive and fracturing a quarterback controversy can be, you kind of applaud him for making a tough decision and going with a kid who he thinks gives this team the best chance to win right now. Gore takes it down to the nine. We'll have one more snap before the two-minute warning. This is strictly a coach's decision. And Alex Smith, who has been bounced around, some of which was a result of his own play, has been through one offensive coordinator after another, finally settled in. And I'll say again, he is 20 Five and one over his last 26 starts, and he's on the bench. We welcome in a new audience. It's a second down and eight for the 49ers who lead by 10. And they now lead by more. Touchdown Frank Gore as they lead by 16, but a flag is down. We'll see if for 77. Offense. 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. They get Mike Upati for a hold. In the midst of all those bodies, and Upati takes points off the board with a hold. With his 49ers up by 10, 214 left. Saints are out of timeouts, and let's see where it occurred. Right there on Lofton. Well, I'll follow that up, Joe, and, and as you well know, I'm a big fan of Alex Smith. You know, and he's he's played he's played great. What can you say? But I think, and I'm not trying to defend the decision. I'm just saying and they know what they've got with Alex Smith. Here's Jacobs carrying it inside the 20, and they obviously feel like there's just a little more upside with Colin Kaepernick and some of the big playability that he provides. We've seen some of that today. Two minute warning in New Orleans. And the young kid is about to go 2-0 and as a starter. Breeze with a pump fake, now he's picked. Touchdown 49ers. Pass is tipped and picked. And Wittner is in for the touchdown. Two pick six is thrown by Drew Brees in this game as Gore is down just outside the 15-yard line for the 49ers, their first game with two interceptions returned for touchdowns since October of 95. When they were in St. Louis against the Rams, who had just moved there, that game was at Bush Stadium, and Ken Norton Jr. got both of them. There's Delaney Walker, who's out with a hip injury. 
And there's the stat. The defense has done it all year for Vic Fangio. And Jamal Brooks, who has his first career touchdown here today in San Francisco. They let the clock wind down on fourth down. And spend a timeout. And you see Drew Brees there and. And we saw the interview that he did with Terry Bradshaw and saying how much he misses the conversations that he would have with Sean Payton not always football related either and Joe Vitt said the same thing said I really miss my my good friend Sean and Joe we had a chance to see him on Thursday night following that game back in Dallas and he was so, so proud of the way that this team has come back and battled after a tough start to put themselves in this position but it's pretty obvious he's a guy who's desperately missed within that organization but it's a team that even with a loss here today is still alive with a big finish in that wild card chase in the NFC producer of today's game Richie Zients the director is Rich Russo the associate directors are Jake Joel event and Rich Gross broadcast associates are Bentley Elliott and Alex Olson this is a 33 yard drive it's can't get on top of it. The Saints will take over. It was Malcolm Jenkins who got through to block it, and now a late flag comes in at the end of the play. But a 10 point game, no timeouts remaining for the Saints with a minute five on the clock. Jenkins got a lot of ball. And then the flags came flying at the end of the play. After the play, personal foul, number 77 of New Orleans. By virtue of his actions, he's been disqualified. Half the distance to the goal, first down. So Broderick Bunkley is out of the rest of the game. Let's see if we can see at number 77. And he kicks at Alex Boone. And he is therefore kicked out of the ball game, and rightfully so. You know, a lot of things happen during the course of the game that we don't always capture. You don't know, you know, what maybe has happened throughout this ball game, but there's no place in the game for that. So the Saints take over, but how much do you want to expose Drew Brees here with a minute five left? I guess you got to take a couple of shots, and these 49ers have been coming after Brees. This second half, he has been under fire. Four men on the rush. Breeze to the sideline out of the reach of Henderson. Second and ten. Well, I think Jim Harbaugh has got to obviously feel good about you know what's happened here today and the way that his defense came out and played, and then offensively and Colin Kaepernick. I mean, a lot of things to like, but I guess if you look at it from a coaching perspective, you say, "Wow, the field goals." You know, I mean, Akers misses the one. He gets one block there, and. That's a concern, especially as you move through the season and on into January. Something that Brad Seeley, who's also the assistant head coach, will try and tighten up. This pass is behind Sproles. And just to finish our list, technical producer Dave Hill, technical director Colby Bourgeois, and the audio mixer is Fred Aldis. Studio show produced by Bill Richards, directed by Bob Levy, and our thanks to Ed Sfita, statistician in the booth, and Dave Schwalbe, our spotter. Steve Horn editorial consultant before third and ten. Under a minute to go. Pass caught by Jimmy Graham who's been quiet today. Bowman on the stop a gain of seven. And now it's fourth down. Interestingly enough Joe this will be the first time that the Saints defensively have held an opponent under 400 yards of total offense. Last ranked defense in the NFL. The drive will continue as Graham has a first down. Under half a minute to go. And they gave up the long drive as we talked about. The, the ball that started the drive for the 49ers to start on the six yard line and the 49ers go down the field and they come away with a field goal to make it a 10 point game. But this game would have a different look if it weren't for the two interceptions returned for touchdowns. There is Sproles out of the backfield. Cuts up field. Terrell Brown is there to force him out. Four seconds remain. A 35-yard catch and run by Sproles 
who's back after missing three games out with a broken hand. Four seconds on the clock and the Saints who came in having won five of six will go to five and six and the 49ers to eight two and one leading the West. Blue 20, blue 20, sorry. And penalty flags fly as the Saints were just going to kneel down. Prior to the delay game, timeout San Francisco. So San Francisco calls a timeout. And that looks like a surprise to Jim Harbaugh, who in his second year will have an overall record of 21 5 and 1, with a 1 and 1 record in the postseason. And they're a different team with Kaepernick at quarterback, and they are maybe a hair more dangerous if he can settle in as the young quarterback. No doubt. And then they're a better team, obviously, with Jim Harbaugh as their head coach, too. You know, well, you're going in that direction. And I think a lot of people have talked about. The, the talent that they have Trent Baalke's done an excellent job also of filling out this roster but Jim Harbaugh and his staff you watch them week after week they're very well coached they're talented they're an awfully good football team a final of 31 21 Drew Brees on the losing end and it's young Colin Kaepernick all smiles and why not he's got a road win back after